How you doing? Helen, how you doing? Good morning. Janet. Big nerds. Love that song. Come on in here. Vicky, Marie, Maria, Helen, Denise. So good to call to conquer. Come on in here. Julia. Good morning. Good morning. Caroline. Caroline. Yeah. Carolyn Taylor, good morning. Maddie, Rebecca, good morning. Nicole, Shelly, Larry, what's up, y'all? Mortgage Monty, Bernice, Rosie from Indiana. Miss Holman, Sandy, good morning. Rebecca, good morning. Aiken, good morning. Mindy, Tessa, Helen. Good morning. Ray, Margaret. Good morning. Jeanette. Prince. Gwen Hudson, how you doing? Adrian, good morning. Joseph, Heather. Oh, we've been praying for you, Heather. Praying God's blessing and God's comfort over you. So sorry for your loss. Kathy, good morning. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Nancy. Rachel, Josephine, Susan, Becca, Anna, Helen. Good morning. Tanya, good morning. Josephine, good morning. Thank you so much, Robin. Audrey, good morning. Ruth, good morning. Nancy, good morning. God is so, so good. Aiden, good morning. Marlene, good morning. Sarah, good morning over here. Nancy. His goodness is running. Cousin Elma, good morning. Give the boys my love. Angie. Stephanie, what's up, girl? Chris, good morning. Keith, good morning. Donna, good morning. Sam, good morning. What up? I'll hit you back. Morning, Tanya. Kentucky in the house representing. Come on in here. Come on, Andrea, good morning. Cynthia, Jane. Virgie, good morning. Sarah, good morning. Erica. His goodness is, is running after us this morning. Liz, Colleen Johnston, come on in here this morning. My Life of Grace, good morning. Jen, good morning. Kimberly, good morning. Lori. Lorista, how you doing, girl? I miss seeing y'all so much. Keith, good morning. From Rhode Island. Good morning, Keith. Josh. Caitlin D. Rogers. Josh. Got my keys, got my wallet, got my cell phone. It's going to be a great day. Come on, John. Paula, good morning. Yo, let's prepare our hearts. Let's prepare our hearts. Let's go red on the screens. Hicks, good morning. Can we declare the goodness of God? Nancy, Tori, 
Just grab the nearest red emoji and let's go red on the screen. Elaine, good morning. Shanae, good morning. Mother-in-law, good morning. All oh, the Lord is good. Roz, come on in here. Good morning, Roz. Marlene, come on. Let's lift him up. Father, we left, bless you. We honor you. That's it. Come on in here. Gina, he's good. He's good. He's a way maker. Heather, good morning, girl. Come on. Oh, he's a good guy. Ah, he's so good. Ah, oh, he's so good. He's so good. Share it. Invite a friend. Tell them to come join you right now. God's got a word for God's people. He is good. Can I tell you, the Lord is good today. He's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. He is good. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're lifting up your head in the midst of trying and challenging times, in the midst of hard days, long days. I want you to know God is on the throne and God is good. Father, we invite you into this time. Would you speak to us through your word? Would you speak to us through this great community? Would you speak to us uh, in this time, Father, would you stir our hearts? Would you stir our hearts? Would you help us grab our righteous minds so that we might walk with authenticity and integrity uh, with you, that we may stay in line with your purposes in the earth? In Jesus' name, amen. Yo, it's good news today, morning devotional show. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Uh, I don't care what you're going through. I come to tell you, everything's going to be okay today. Uh, come on. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, everything's going to be okay. Come on, everything is going to be okay. Uh, Jesus going to make a way. We're going to shout on good news today. Everybody lift your hands and say, hey, yo, come on. What you got to say about that, huh? Come on, honey. No comment. That's right. We're shutting them down. We're opening up the morning with bars and letting you know everything going to be okay. Yo, everything. Listen, can I just tell you everything's going to be okay? God has already made a way. He's already gone before us. He's already opened up the doors. God is so good. He's a good shepherd. He's already anticipated your needs. He's already gone before you and anticipated your needs. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. I hope you're encouraged. God wants to help us. I love it. Uh, snatch our righteous mind. And the reason why... <laughs> Aisha, that's hilarious. She, she said, I see you trying to pull on that shirt. Everything's going to be okay. I'm telling you, it's, it's, I, do it every, I do it every week. Y'all, if you, you notice, you do it every week. And so does everybody big that's wearing something that's a little... It's a little snug. It's a little, because you want that look. You want that little look, but you also, it feels like it's like, <laughs> but it's really just like, oh, you know, but in the shirt, it feels like, oh, this joint is tight. So you just be like, everything's going to be okay. Anyway, um, God, <laughs> God wants us um, to snatch our righteous mind so that we don't miss righteous moments. I'm coming out the gate. God wants us to, to snatch our righteous mind, to walk in our righteous mind so we don't miss righteous moments. So we don't miss righteous moments. Because you 
can be walking with God, serving him, being around him. But if his mind isn't, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. If you don't catch his mind, you will miss the moments. If you don't catch the mind, you will miss the moments. And if you're not walking in step with him, you'll start walking, um, you'll start walking, um, in a rhythm that you think is his, but it really ain't his. Because he will change the game on you. The thing about God, just when you think you got it comfortable, just when you just got it down and you're about, about ready to go on autopilot, just when you're about to go on autopilot, yo, he'll turn left on you. And, you don't, and if you're not careful, you won't even see him when he turns. Because we tend to, instead of keeping our eyes on him, we tend to keep our eyes on him and get our right rhythm. And then we kind of start doing our own thing and we get out of our righteous mind. You, got, we, you, lose, you lose your righteous mind and you will miss a righteous moment. And when he turns left, you'll keep walking and you would have missed the turn. You would have missed. You ever been following somebody and you know you're following and you kind of keep your eye on them, but you kind of drive and you start doing their own thing. And if they make a quick turn, they'll turn and you won't even see it. You, you won't even see it, let alone making the turn. You won't even see when they turn. You'll be, you'll be driving five minutes. They'll be calling you be like, where you at? Oh, I thought I was following you. Where you at? Man, I turned three miles back. I turned three miles back. But if you're not walking and keeping focus in your righteous mind, you will miss the righteous moment. John chapter four. John chapter four. Jesus is walking with his disciples. Now, Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although, in fact, it was not Jesus uh, who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Watch this. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sachar. He made a left turn. He made a left turn. He made a left turn. How do we stay in our righteous mind? I'm about to show you. you got, I'm about to show you. Thanks. For, that's a great question, Angie. I'm about to show you. It's It's um, it's all about keeping your mind on him. Um, uh, the end of Philippians, he talks about whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things are true, think on these things. That's how you keep your righteous mind. Uh, I've been trying to get to that passage all week. I ain't got there yet. But you want to keep your righteous mind? Fill your mind with the things of God. Place them on the things of God. Think on those things. Romans 12, 1 and 2, renew your mind. Don't conform your mind to the things of this world. Those are just some little low-hanging fruit. He made a left turn on them. They're walking, and they were so used to, in, in John chapter 4, they're so used to culturally going around Samaria because Samaritans and Jews had no dealings with one another had no dealings with one another. And it was cultural, it was racial, it was theological. They had intermarried, entertained other gods. They had mixed, they, so it was this whole thing where they were like, we ain't fooling with Samaritans. And Samaritans was like, well, yo, well, we ain't fooling with you. We ain't fooling with you. So, but Jesus says, if you're gonna follow me, um, I'm not gonna go around Samaria. But see, culturally, racially, they were so used to just not fooling with each other. They were like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm following you, Jesus, but I've, I'm, I'm going to follow Jesus. Uh, and, 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 and while following Jesus, they walk right past an opportunity, an opportunity to turn towards healing and hope. You can be following Jesus and miss the left turn that he makes towards healing and hope because you're following him to get to where you want him to go. But he's gonna take you places where you never would have planned, you never would have scheduled. He'll, he'll make a left turn towards injustice. He'll make a left turn towards racial reconciliation. He'll make a, a left turn towards hope and healing. And if you're not careful, your cultural GPS will be so loud, your cultural GPS will have you keep walking when spiritually you should have stopped and turned left. 
Are y'all in here with me? See, because some of y'all will try to come for me and be like, yo, he just talking all this stuff about his opinion and he ain't using the Bible. And yesterday he was talking all that, but he, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, come here, come here. Look at John 4. Let me show you. This is a biblical issue. This ain't some social, social thing. This is biblical, Jack. And yes, it is 2020 and I said the word Jack. I pulled a 1992 word for a 2020 moment. <laughs> See, the problem is following Jesus, your cultural GPS can be so long, you won't hear the Holy Siri, the, the Holy Spirit, sorry, you won't hear Siri, the, the Holy Spirit say, turn left. We're going through Samaria. But culturally, I'm so used to ignoring Black Lives Matter. Turn left. We're going through Samaria. Culturally, I'm so used to disregarding Republicans in their perspective. Culturally, uh, uh, it says spiritually, turn left. But cult culturally, I'm so used to thinking that everyone that's Republican is racist and everyone that's, that's, that's Democrat is, a, is this, this fierce liberal with uh, our godless. Uh, uh, turn your cultural volume down and turn left. Turn your cultural volume down and turn your kingdom volume up or else you'll be walking with Jesus and he'll turn left and you'll just keep on walking. You'll just keep on walking. He turned left and he says we must need to go through Samaria because there is, there is racial divide here. And if you're going to follow me, I'm not going to walk around these cultural issues and this racial divide. I'm going to walk through it. I'm going to walk to it and we're going to deal with it. There's healing and there's hope in Samaria because there's a woman who needs to hear today that her life matters. So Jesus took these cultural Jews that were so used to ignoring the issue and Jesus put a sign and says, Samaritan lives matter. And he says, we going through Samaria today. Come on in here. Hello. So be careful that your cultural volume is too loud, that you don't hear the, the, the left turn of God calling you to reconciliation and righteousness. Because there's a person there. There's not a stat there. There's not, there's not a talking point there. There's a woman there and she needs to hear because the devil has been lying to this woman, telling her who she's not. The devil has been abusing this woman. Culture has been, ab have been, abusing, has been abusing this woman. Men have been abusing this woman. The community, they've been abusing this woman. And I am going to this woman to say countercultural to the abuse of the culture, uh, to the abuse of the, and then watch this. And then also to the, to the racism that you've experienced from my Jewish nation from those that know God. He tells her, he says, you worship what you do not know. You don't even know what you worship in. We, the Jews, we know the true God, but even we who have known the true God have culturally and racially been biased to you. So I've come to tell you, your life matters. And I've come to give you what we all need, and that's living water. That's living water. That's living water. Followers of Jesus Christ, disciples of 2020, the remnant, hear me and hear me well. You got to stay in your righteous mind or you will miss the righteous moments of Jesus turning left and taking you places where you never would have anticipated. Stay in your righteous mind or you will miss the righteous moments of Jesus turning left and taking you to places theologically, sociologically, racially that you would have never planned to go. He's taking you somewhere. Keep your righteous mind and stay at the table. Stay at the table. There was a guy in here yesterday that said, I didn't sign up. I didn't come in here to talk about oppression and racism. In his comments, he probably didn't. He, <laughs> he probably didn't say it like that. Did you hear how I said that? Did you hear how I interpreted his comments? He could have been like, "I didn't really sign up to study racism," but you you hear what I did? I was like, "I didn't sign up to come in here and talk about racial and oppression." 
But I want to encourage you, just because you didn't sign up for it don't mean you don't need it. And don't think that following God, you only going to get what you sign up for. So lose that posture. Lose that posture as a believer that if I don't like what's happening in the conversation, I want to walk away. Sit down and listen. You might learn something that you otherwise would not experience at all because you're at the table. And that's what it means to be at the table, at, the, at our family table here, with people that don't look like you, live like you, and vote like you. Every now and then, look at the folks that's in here and then click on their, their page and go look at their page. We got, we got all kinds of folks in here. But just because you didn't sign up for it don't mean you don't need it. I hope he didn't sign off yesterday and I hope he stayed on today. And some of y'all encouraged him to stay on. But that's what I'm talking about. That's why you got to keep your righteous mind and keep a posture of humility and say, Lord, there may be something here worthy of me learning. So let me, less, less Jesus turns left and you keep walking. And because you didn't have a righteous mind, but an arrogant, self-centered, self-righteous mind, or just a frustrated mind or a comfortable mind, you missed the righteous moment. This was a righteous moment where God did something redemptive. This whole town of Samaria ended up coming to Jesus because Jesus turned left and went there. You have no idea what kind of deliverance is going to come when you go to uncomfortable places, places that you normally would avoid. When you go there and begin to say, Lord, what do you have for me here? There may be living water that you desperately need waiting right there at the well. So some of you may feel stretched. Some of you may feel, oh, you feel like, and God is pulling you in places where you are uncomfortable. Don't lose your righteous mind in the places of discomfort. Or else you will miss the turns of God and you will miss him taking you to places where you never would have scheduled, but your soul desperately needed. Go to the uncomfortable places. Since when did we as Christians get so uncomfortable with hard and difficult things and things that go outside of your sphere, your understanding? That is the very essence of what it means to be in the family of God, to experience diversity in a way that stretches you, that ultimately changes you and gives you, watch this, a fuller picture of who God is. Because if you really want to see who I am, look at what my family looks like. So away with, resist, put down this aversion of challenging hard conversations and don't spend needless, wasteless time defending a position where you've already been. You've been there. You don't need to defend that. You might need to open up your heart and eyes and be open to something new that God is doing, especially when you see it in the book. Now, when we get outside of scripture, that's a different thing. We got boundaries and we want to live within the word of God. But, it's, but when it's biblical, but you've just, you've just settled for a comfortable interpretation instead of a kingdom interpretation. Come on in here. Then maybe God's stretching you. Turn to your neighbor in the thread and say, turn left, turn left, turn left. Turn left, turn left, turn left. You, you missed your turn. You missed your turn. Jesus has taken us somewhere. Turn left. God, did, God got to 2020 and you had a whole vision for 2020 and you was driving to your, to your vision board. You was driving to your vision. You was going, girl. You was going, you was headed and he messed around 2020 February. He turned left and it took us March to figure out, wait a minute, he didn't turn. Lord have mercy. This whole year then took a whole turn. Can I tell you? Jesus knew it was going to turn. Jesus knew what was going on. Jesus knew he was bringing us into this place. He turned left on you. Now, what does it mean for us to follow him and see, uh, there may be lessons here. Not only are there lessons here, there's provision here. There's a well there. Not only is there provision here, but there's, a, there's healing here. 
This woman had been abused. She needed to be seen. She needed to know that her life mattered. She needed to know that her life mattered. And Jesus didn't go to her wounded, broken self in Samaria. And she, she pushed back. She was like, what are you even doing here in Samaria? You don't even like Samaritans. Why are you even here? She was like, and Jesus was like, because Samaritans' lives matter. Injustice is happening here in Samaria. You've been abused by a patriarchal system, patriarchal system um, and you own your sixth husband. Well, the, the sixth man in your life. And he's not your husband, but you're living with him. Because culturally, a divorced woman in that society was basically passed around, abused. She was held victim to a system where she didn't get to make the choices about how she ended up or who she ended up with or her ability to, to, to she, she was at the, at the beck and call of men's decisions concerning her life. So it was an abusive relationship. And she was in her sixth relationship. This man is not her husband. <sighs> what Jesus wants to know is I've come so that I might be the seventh man in your life. And the seventh man in your life will bring healing and wholeness and you will never need another thing as long as you live because I will provide for you satisfaction to the deepest longings of your soul. Meet man number seven. I've come to make you whole. So wholeness was there. Are we in here today? Come on in here. So it's just not about don't allow culture to define this moment. Don't allow culture to define the tensions and what's happening here. God is doing something in the spirit and he's bringing healing and wholeness to whites, to blacks, to Asians, to Latinos. He's bringing healing and wholeness to homes. There's hope here. There's provision here. There's joy here. But you'll never get it if you don't turn left. Or for, you know, uh, for my, my political folks, the metaphor could go either way. You can turn right or turn left, whichever one. For you, just turn kingdom. Turn kingdom. I hear you. I hear you. Why we got to turn left? Why I got to be left? Why I why can't be right? Shut up. Turn kingdom. How about that? Turn kingdom. But I, I think the point that I want to make is the, the, the disciples who are walking with Jesus every day, didn't even see it. The followers of Jesus who walking with Jesus every day didn't even see it. They was about to go around Samaria and Jesus says, no, we got to go through it. What are y'all doing? Are you really trying to be the, are you really trying to be disciples of Jesus Christ and perpetuating racism and segregation? What are you doing, bro? Like, are you really about to walk around because you don't like these people and you expect me to ride with you while you walk around these people? Are you really going to be a follower of Jesus Christ but try to lead me into racism? Did you get what I just said? I said, are you really going to try to be a follower of Jesus Christ but then lead Jesus around Samaria? Lead Jesus in racism? See, the problem is we following Jesus, um, but then leading him, trying to lead him, trying to lead his people, trying to lead his church around other people. Oh, so the disciples, oh, y'all want to act like Samaria don't even exist, huh? Y'all want to act like it ain't even real, huh? I'm not following Jesus, you not. Because I hear the cries of the Samaritan people thirsty and desperately needing water and I got living water and you don't get to pick and choose who gets the water so it's a caution to you and I it's a caution to you and I to be careful because we can be following Jesus worshiping doing our little Bible time every day and he turned left and we won't even miss it You won't even see it. Your righteous mind. That's why you got to keep your mind on him, on the things of him, seeking him, discerning 
ask the Lord, speak into my every move, speak into my every moment, because I don't want to miss my righteous mind today and miss righteous moments today. I think there are righteous, redemptive moments laced into every day. But if you're not walking in your righteous mind, but walking in your, uh, you're not walking in your righteous mind, but walking in your reluctant flesh, you will miss the moments of God. Your reluctant flesh, your flesh is reluctant to do the things of God. It's reluctant to walk in the peace of God. It's reluctant to walk in the hope of God. It's, it's going to resist your resistant flesh. So you need to choose, am I going to walk in my righteous mind today or my resistant flesh today? Am I walking in righteousness or am I walking in res resistance against the power of God today? And there are implications. There are implications to how you choose to walk today. I believe that a righteous mind aligned with the movement of God. So be in step. In Galatians, it says, so align. So, so walk in step with the spirit. As so it talks about the fruit of the spirit, it talks about the fruit of the spirit and all that. So he says, so daily walk in step with the spirit. So a, a part of the righteous mind is a righteous rhythm that's in step with the spirit of God. So my righteous mind, I'm pursuing the things of God. I'm walking in it. Oh, it's going on. I snatch it back and I'm in step with God. And when I'm in step with God in my righteous mind, it lends itself to righteous redemptive moments that I might miss if I'm not careful. Can I go a little deeper? Can I go a little deeper? Let's go to Luke. Uh, Luke 19. Let's go to Luke 19. Let me show you something else. Luke 19 is the story of Zacchaeus. Y'all remember Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for Jesus he wanted to see. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing, Luke 19, and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector uh, and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree, fig tree, to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Watch this, verse 7, and the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. So Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was the enemy of the people. He was the perpetuator of injustice. He was the one that took advantage of his own people and abused them financially for his own gain. And he worked for the state of Rome. He would go to his own neighborhood, to raise taxes so that he'd have enough to give to Rome and to keep for himself. And it was a, it was a, a systemic injustice and he was a part of the system he was the culprit of the system. The Bible says he was the chief tax collector. So he was the main one. He was good at it, but he was looking for Jesus. And the other Jesus followers, walk with me. The other Jesus followers were there to see and to be with Jesus. And they were there. Uh, John Shaw, you already see where I'm going with this. Jesus was already there and Jesus was was, was going there in in in. And everybody's ready to see Jesus and Jesus have this moment. And then Jesus does something that ticks the whole crowd off. He looks up. And the one that they would rally against, the one that they would all want to try to tear down, Jesus says, Zacchaeus, chief tax collector, chief abuser, of the people who've gathered together to follow me. 
come down, I want to go to your house. Now, you got to understand, everybody there is hoping that they could get a shout out from Jesus. Everybody there is loving to have a moment with Jesus. Everybody there would love to be able to sit and have dinner with Jesus. And Jesus is going to pick the culprit, the abuser, the oppressor, and said, I'm coming to your house. I want to have dinner with you. Yo, the people that were there following Jesus were ticked. They mother, it's like, how they, how he gonna go to Zacchaeus' house? Don't he know who Zacchaeus is? How he gonna go eat with Zacchaeus? Well, Zacchaeus was in a tree looking for Jesus. He was looking for Jesus. And Zacchaeus was surprised to discover that Jesus, the same one he was looking for, Jesus was looking for him. He was looking for Jesus and Jesus was looking for him. He got, he looked up in the tree. Why is he in the tree? Because Zacchaeus was so short in statue, he couldn't see Jesus because all the people were in the way. Did y'all see that any preachers in here, can you see where I'm going? Is the setup clear? Can I come on? We can go and get on out of here a little early today. Can, do you see me coming? Do you see what I'm saying? Be careful. Be careful thinking you got Jesus figured out. Because some, some of us, I mean, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. Come on, let's keep it real today. Some of us are all excited saying, yeah, let's turn to Samaria. Let's go left. Let's go left to Samaria. Yes, they're hurting people. Yes, let's go. Samaritan lives matter. Samaritan lives matter. And she's hurting there. And yes, let's go left. But Jesus over in Luke, he looks up and he says, now let me turn right to this tax collector. Let me turn right and grab the oppressor. And you know what the people that did were following Jesus then? Because Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't turn. Jesus, Jesus, instead of kept walking, he stopped and they ran into Jesus. It's as if they ran into him. It's like they bumped a wall. They was like, whoa, what are you doing? And they found themselves actually in opposition of Jesus. Watch this. They found themselves in opposition because he stopped. And they was like, you don't need to stop for this Zacchaeus. What do you keep walking? Why are you stopping? And they're trying to push Jesus to keep going. And it's like, no, 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 no. Zacchaeus, I want, I want to go to your house. I want to go to your house. Because you're an oppressor of people. And you need me just as much as this oppressed woman in Samaritan, Samaria does. So the people following me need to be prepared for me to go left and need to be prepared for me to stop and call out oppressors out of trees. See, because the only way true deliverance is going to come is I got to set free the, both the oppressed and the oppressors. So if you're going to follow Jesus, let me just tell you, be real careful down up and through here that you don't find yourself carving out one side of Jesus. Because Jesus will turn left on you, then he'll stop abruptly on you and, cause, and he says you got to love both. So let me caution you as we navigate down these hard racial oppressed victims, police, all this stuff. Yeah, be, yeah, be passionate. But watch this. I want you to see Jesus was just as passionate as he was in Samaria as he was at Zacchaeus' house. And can you show love in both houses are you, or do you have a one house kind of love? Hello and hi. I, I, I feel we got a one house kind of love. And we've developed comments in our feed and we're arguing back and forth and we arguing about Samaritan matters. Uh, and then Zacchaeus, no, this, 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 and we got we to gotta stop and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus got a heart. Um, a heart that houses both. 
I, b I believe the great prophetic melodic voice of the five heartbeats comes to mind. A house, a heart is a house for love. And I learned that it don't take much to break a heart is a house for love. Come on, baby, you gonna sing with me? And I learned. Yeah, it don't take much for us to break break a heart because we want to break it in two places. Come on in here, somebody. I, the good news today, I need you to understand this. If we're going to follow Jesus, we got to be prepared for sharp turns and abrupt stops to love all people. We've got to be prepared for him to take sharp turns and go through Samaria. And we've got to be prepared for him to make abrupt stops to call Zacchaeus out of the tree and say, I'm lovingly coming to your house. Watch this. Not to beat you, not to destroy you, not to cancel you, but to deliver you. Jesus didn't come and say, Zacchaeus, I'm canceling you. All your sponsors pull out. All your stuff pull out. Everybody leave you alone. No, 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 no. Jesus said, I didn't come to cancel you. And we Christians, be careful. I know it feels good and it feels like this, this, this vengeful relief when people get canceled. But I'm telling you, Jesus ain't going around canceling the Imago Day. So y'all need to y'all be real careful. Y'all just going on canceling folks and shutting folks down and saying you are done. I'm finished with you. Whatever. You better snatch your righteous mind back. You are outside of the realm of God. You have gone off the biblical landscape. You are off. You have gone too far, even for the oppressors. We don't get to cancel them. You don't get to cancel them. Sometimes I wish I could. Sometimes I wish I could take vengeance in my own hand. I want, you can unfollow them, but you don't get to cancel them. You don't get to speak the death and the demise. That's God's child. It's God's child that needs deliverance. It's God's child that needs, hell to be, that needs accountability. But we've gone past accountability. We've gone to canceling. Be careful. It's godless activity. It's godless behavior. And if it's godless, last time I checked, if it's godless, that means it's demonic. Don't fool around. Don't dance in the demonic. That's a good word, Joy. I love that. I, I believe in the book of Matthew, he talks about uh, how you don't get to, the word is raka. You don't, get to, you don't get to cancel people. In the Ten Commandments, he said this way, thou shalt not murder. The word murder is more than just the idea of taking, um, if, of, of causing someone to die, killing somebody. The word, the idea of murder is taking life. You don't get to take life from someone. You don't get to cancel someone. You don't get to say this, they're dead to me. You don't get to live as though God's child is dead to you. You don't get to rocka. The word rocka is there in the book of Matthew. The word rocka. You don't get to say you're dead to me. You don't get to, you don't get to be like, I'm, I'm done. Cancel. You don't exist to me. You don't get to do that to God's child. He made them in the Imago day. He created them in his image. So even if they are wrong, they're foul, they failed, you don't get to cancel them. You know why? Because you've been wrong, you failed, and you've been foul, and he didn't cancel you. So if Jesus didn't cancel us, then who are you to get to cancel anybody else? He went to Samaria and he went to Zacchaeus. Deal with it, Jack, 1992. Come on in here. Get your righteous mind. Not only did he say, watch this, he called him out the tree and he didn't condemn him. He didn't cancel him. He didn't destroy him. But yo, he was like, I just want, let's go. Let's kick it at the crib. But watch what happens. Watch what happens. Let me read the rest of it. Seven, watch the, watch the response of the, of the church people. Watch the response of the Jesus followers and then watch the response of the abusive oppressor. Watch the two responses to Jesus's invitation. Um, so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. So there's a gladly welcome, there's hospitality there. Seven, all the people saw this and began to mutter, he is gone to be the guest of a sinner. Hate us. They're hating up in that joint, right? But then eight, watch what Zacchaeus does. But Zacchaeus, just at the invitation, they ain't even got to the house yet. 
They didn't even got to the house yet. But just the fact that Jesus saw him and invited him, watch Zacchaeus' response. Verse 8. Y'all circle this. Go back and read it. This is a devotional. Don't trip. This is a Bible study, kind of. <laughs> watch this. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Reparations. Just at the invitation of Jesus, he's, he's convicted and he says, I've done wrong and I will give back everything I took and I will restore. Maybe what will help folks see the racism, maybe what will help them see the injustice that has been perpetuated by their hand willingly and unwillingly, knowingly and unknowingly, maybe what will help some of our brothers and sisters see the racism and the injustice is a divine hospitable invitation to sit with Jesus. This is where my counterparts would disagree with me. That's, this is where my activists will get away from the table. This is where they get up and say, bump that. We need to take that. And all, 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 there are a bunch of strategies and a bunch of things. But as followers of Jesus Christ, I'm kind of going to try to do what Jesus does. He turns over tables, yes, but he also invites oppressors to sit at tables. Are y'all, we in here? Hello? So the message, the good news for today is if you're an oppressor, if you've made some mistakes, if you've wrongly abused people, if you've wrongly, if you've done folks wrong, the culture may counsel you, but the kingdom never will. The kingdom doesn't seek to cancel you. The kingdom seeks to redeem you. But you'll never experience the fullness of the power of Jesus being in your house if you miss the moment for repentance. Oppressors, it ain't enough to have him come to your house. While he there, you, you, you sure enough need to repent. Because a dinner party is a, is a whole lot better with Jesus if you repent first. Jesus, you come to my house? Okay, let me just go ahead and repent right now. That's what Zacchaeus was like, you come to my house? Okay, okay, because there's some stuff in my house that's going to be jacked up. Let me go ahead and get this straight right now. Forgive me, Jesus. Not just forgive me, but I give back how I benefited from my bad behavior. Do you see this? Jesus is not some passive punk. Like some of us, we give Jesus a bad rep as if, yeah, yeah, they just going to get off by saying, no, no, no. He said, Zagia says, forgive me and here are reparations. Let me give back how I financially benefited from this systemic injustice. My repentance and my accountability and my redemption should not just cost Jesus something, but it will now cost me something because I've benefited from an unjust system, from an unjust system. So let me pay back. That's true repentance. So if you've benefited, start looking for ways to pay back. That's the good news today. <laughs>